Nene, everybody. Um, I think I'm going to do that one video I hinted at uh, earlier about how I became a kinetic pagan. Um, so, you know, I guess we'll get started right at the beginning. Um, you know, I guess it would start off with background, uh, you know, where I, how I was raised and everything. So, I was not raised necessarily in a Christian household. Um, my mother is what I would like to call a cantankerous Catholic. Um, when my mother and my father got married, my mother was uh, in the Catholic Church. She's adopted, so um, her stepfather is Catholic. And uh, she and my uh, grandmother converted to Catholicism, and uh, that's how they ended up there. But uh, my father uh, also converted to Catholicism earlier in his life, and um, he had been previously married. So um, when they wanted to get married, they had to go to a priest, and they wanted a Catholic wedding, obviously. But um, he would have to get an annulment from his previous marriage, and that would have taken them a very long time. So they got married by the justice of the peace, and my mother kind of lost, I wouldn't say she lost her faith in Catholicism, because she still claims to be Catholic to this very day, but she's lost a lot of her faith in the hierarchy of the church. So they never took me or uh, I have two sisters they never took us to church um, I can only remember one time when they took us to church and that was when I was around nine years old because <laughs> I was curious about church and I was like well, what is it like to go to church so they took us to Easter Mass and I never asked again to go to church <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah, that's my my background. I didn't even know I was Catholic until I was around probably 10. And, you know, uh, somebody brought it up when I was a child in, in class. Or not in class, but on a field trip. And I was like, you know, coming home that day. And it's like, Mom, what religion are we? And she's like, we're Catholic. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but uh, they never took me to church except for that one time. I hated it because, you know, it was boring, I didn't know any of the hymns, I felt so alienated, but I digress. So, very nominally Christian in my household. Um, but uh, my interest in Egypt started at a very young age as well. I uh, started reading about Egyptian mythology probably when I was around eight because I was interested in Goosebumps. Um, and one of my favorite books was, you know, the ones about the mummy and, you know, uh, all that creepy stuff with that. So I was like, well, I want to learn about mummies. Um, and obviously there you go. You, you have Egypt and mummies and all that good stuff. And, uh, and I, I was very enchanted with, um... Uh, Egyptian mythology, and I even have a book that my parents used to own, and it's it's now mine. Um, <laughs> that uh, has has uh, you know Tutankhamun's uh, funerary mask and, and and everything like that. And uh, I was always so enchanted with that book. It's like you know I would go over and over and over again, looking at all the pictures. You know, obviously because. They're so beautiful, all their treasures, all their all the stuff that they brought with them. And I'm like, what a glorious civilization, what beauty and what wonderful deities. So it's like I remember um I don't remember my exact age. I was probably around eleven or in the fifth grade or something like that. When Zahi Hawass was doing this one thing on Fox and my parents actually taped it for me. I was able to show it to my class. <laughs> and they were like excavating like what was supposedly to be the tomb of Osiris. And I was like, wait, what if they find Osiris's body? Wouldn't that prove the Egyptian religion real? Wouldn't that be cool? 
<laughs> so, you know, I had that inkling ever since I was very, very young. But, you know, I didn't ever really considered that uh, Egyptian religion could be, you know, viable until, you know, when I was older and I found out about paganism. And so, you know, kind of going on from there when I was very young, you know, I always considered myself Christian because, you know, I didn't know what else there was. I mean, I understood of Islam because I had ca classmates that were Muslim and I understood Judaism, but, you know, my parents were Christian and that's what I knew, so I stayed with that until I was probably around 14. And, and this is a very integral moment because, um, my sister had a teacher who was uh, in, like in a reading comprehension class and she lent her a book and it was by Tim LaHaye and somebody else and I forget who it was but I, I imagine you all know who it was or what book series it was it was Left Behind series you know about the re revelations and the Christian apocalypse and everything so she read the book or she started to read the book and uh, I didn't want to go through you know reading a book for, I was curious about it but I didn't want to go through all the work of reading the book so I checked out the, the comic book version from the library <laughs> Um, but we both came up with the same question. It's like, you know, you have in this book series, uh, we only read the first one, but you have in the first book, you know, Jews, Muslims, and all this, you know, all these other, to uh, Hindus, and all these other, you know, religious, uh, you know, differences between these. And what happens with them when, you know, you have the Christian rapture going on? And, you know, we both hated to admit it, but we've realized it's like, you know, in Christianity, if you're not Christian, and this is what we didn't understand until we were this old, if you're not Christian, you go to hell. And, and, and at that point, you know, we're like, what just a loving God would send someone to hell for a mistake? You know, you know, essentially, you know, people are often raised in a religious tradition, and a lot of them don't change their religious beliefs during their lifetime. So, you know, a lot of it's, you know, due to chance, you know, I was born in a Catholic household. Um, somebody might else, someone else might be born in a Hindu household, you know. Who's right? And should they be at fault for, you know, being born in the wrong religious tradition? We both found that very wrong. And at that point, I, I completely gave up Christianity altogether. I became an agnostic. I didn't even know the word until I was probably around 15. And a friend told me, it's like, well, I'm agnostic, you know. I, I don't really know, you know, which tradition uh, is true or, you know. But he's like, he said, I did he he did believe in a deity, but he didn't know which one was true. And I'm like, that's me. So I stayed agnostic until probably 14, up until I uh, got into college. And um, freshman year of college, I was just, you know, browsing on YouTube. And I found out about, what was it called? I don't remember. The Blasphemy Challenge. And, uh... I forget the group who was doing it, but they were atheists. And, um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name, it's gonna kill me. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, the blasphemy, the blasphemy challenge was to deny the Holy Spirit, you know, which is part of the, um, Christian triad, you know, Son, Father, Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit. Um, because apparently that was the unforgivable sin. You would never be able to go to heaven if you denied the Holy Ghost. And so, you know, I saw this, and being an agnostic, you know, it's like at, it's, at a certain point I was like, mm, but and sometimes like, this feels wrong for me. I don't know why, but it does. And so I started looking at, you know, different things like uh, the existence of God and philosophy and, you know, why, you know, Christianity would be true, 
But, you know, even though, you know, certain arguments like the Kalam cosmological argument or you know, some other thing um, made me believe that there was a deity, something out there, um, I was never completely um, convinced that Christianity was true. And it, and, you know, it, it, that sort of, you know, I struggled with that for a while. Um, whether, you know, whether there was a God or not, you know. And um, eventually, you know, around 2008, it kind of culminated in sort of an existential crisis. Um, and I was diagnosed with depression, like, uh, in the spring of 2008. And I was feeling, you know, the whole thing. It's like, I don't know whether it was because of, you know, uh, physiological reasons, you know, depression with serotonin and uh, other neurotransmitters and everything, or was it because of, you know, my existential crisis saying, you know, is, is there a God? Is there a purpose in life? You know, it, it's very difficult to determine that sort of thing. But anyway, during that summer, I kind of had a, you know, a, a breathing period. Um, and, you know, even ever since, you know, I started looking into, you know, whether there's a cop I was like, I wish there was a religion for me. Um, you know, obviously because Christianity, I thought was, you know, pretty much didn't answer my questions. I thought it, I even thought it was an immoral because it's like, you know, who would condemn somebody to hell? But, uh, you know, during that time, I began to ask questions. It's like, well, which religion do I think would be true? And I always thought that nature was very divine. It's like ever since I was in high school, I thought, you know, you know, if, if God made anything perfect, it was probably nature. You know, trees, forests, um, how the uh, earth works with itself. Um, so. Actually, the first book I read on paganism was uh, Elements of Teen Witchcraft, I think that's the title, by Ellen Dugan. And I like her, but <laughs> God's bless her heart, she's a terrible poet, because, you know, you, if you've ever read her spells or anything, you know, uh, her she's always stumbling over her, uh, her what's the word I'm looking for? Not her syntax, but uh, the rhythm of her poetry. <laughs> But uh, but I I really liked the book because it's like oh my god this makes so much sense you know nature is divine um, and all that good stuff but uh, so you know my sister and I uh, I have a twin and she was she was the same way when, with me when we were you know it's like we're giving up on Christianity when we read the, the Left Behind by Tim Hay and that other guy so. Um, that. I'm trying to think what happened after that. I read the book. I showed it to my sister. We both got into uh, paganism. It's like, well, let's study this. We're going to we're gonna do this whole day and a year thing, and we're going to study it for a day and a year. Obviously, you know, that's, uh, that's how the story went. Um, we, uh, we went beyond a day and a year. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously, you know, elements of teen witchcraft was Wicca. Um, so how did I go into Kemeticism after that? Well, you know, the gods that I would contact in a lot of my rituals were Egyptian because that's what I knew. You know, being uh, nine years old and reading that, uh, that mythology, that was, was, that was what I was most familiar with. And so I was like, well, I'm going to go, uh, you know, talk to Isis or Osiris, Anku. Uh, or any of this as I would call them back then. Um, my sister took a different path. She's uh, she's more Celtic uh, or into Druidry now. Um, but uh, you know, I didn't want to limit myself to uh, just one pantheon at the time because you know, I was still pretty fresh in the practice. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna look around and take it slow and everything like that. Um, we did join uh, an eclectic pagan group back um, in 2008. It was October, and our first one was Samhain, so that was a pretty interesting experience. Um, 
But, uh, you know, I've been a oh, part of that group ever since, but I've always been practicing on my own a whole lot. And um, it was around 2009, um, it was a uh, Lunasa ritual, which uh, uh, was, it was, it's a pretty funny story how I got, you know, more into kineticism, because uh, during that Lunasa ritual, I, or not during the ritual, but after the ritual, it was like a camping trip, I uh, drank a lot, um, and, you know, got pretty drunk at the, at the ritual, but uh, afterwards, um, during my, like, around two weeks afterwards, I was, like, getting this feeling of, you know, look at Sekhmet, you know, look up Sekhmet, 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 and, you know, I had never been that interested in Sekhmet when I was very young, or before, because, you know, my favorite deities were, like, Anubis and Bast. Um, Sekhmet wasn't really in my, uh, periphery until after that new ritual. So I did look it up and you know, after a reading about Sekhmet, I was like, oh my god, this is a deity after my own heart. Because I've always been interested in biology especially, but also infectious diseases and, you know, as many people know, she's the lady of pestilence. She's uh, a deity who inflicts plagues and heals people and stuff like that. So it's like, oh my goodness, you know, deity, yeah, deity after my own heart. So I began to um, do lots of rituals with her and other Egyptian deities at that time. And I just kept going over it and over it and over it until, you know, I started reading about it and I was like, well, I think I'm going to dedicate myself to this pantheon um, because they're the ones I'm most familiar with, the closest with, um, and I love them, you know. I don't feel the same way about the Celtic deities, I don't feel the same way about the Wicca, I don't feel the same way about any other tradition. Um, so I dedicated myself to Sekhmet and that's pretty much how it's been for a long, long, long time. I I do have other deities I'm very close to at this point. Um, Jehuti, obviously, because, you know, when I got into paganism and kemeticism, I was in college. And um, I will say, as long as there's a finals week, there will be prayer at school. Um, other than that, uh, I've been doing a lot of research on my own. Do, uh, Egyptology books. Uh, I already have quite a few, um, even before I was kinetic. But you know, um, and, and if any of you know about uh, Sharon and her kinetic how-to guide, um, I I really like that. And I have her both of her books, the two books that she has, and I I I found them very useful. Um, you know, I'm still going on, you know, I'm pretty young, 25, and, you know, so I'm sort of, you know, little in terms of, you know, how many other people have been practicing paganism for the longest time, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my story. Um, so, you know, if you want to share, or if you want to, uh, you know, talk about, you know, how you, or, well, <laughs> how you came, or, or to paganism, or anything, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good about it, uh, I love talking about these sorts of things, it's like, you know, well, how did you come to the path? I like those sorts of stories, um, so, uh, it was, it was great, it was great talking about it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you and some empty. Bye. <laughs>